Hey everybody. Oh, can I come with you now? So I haven't been on uh, um, Instagram in a while, but I wanted to do this short little live because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are dealing with uh, flies in your home right now. <clears throat> How's everybody doing this evening? Where? What? Yeah, what's this like one game? Okay. So, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are dealing with these little bitty flies that are in your house. Um, I'm not talking about the common house fly or you know um blow flies and things like that i'm talking about these little bitty guys um and oh, we're going to go through each one of trees. these yeah. um so anybody want to take a stab at naming one of them um picture one two three or four <laughs> no. so we're going to go through each one of these guys here i'm um, trying to do this uh where you share the screen um, I think he's brand. Oh, here he is. Let's see here. Fly number one. So, fly number one is called a fungus gnat. Um, and so, people always call fungus gnats fruit flies, but in reality, they are not fruit flies at all. Um, fungus gnats, you usually find these around plants. Um, so, I, I see a lot of people when I'm in groups and things, and they'll say, like, all these flies are all these little gnats are, are, they'll call them fruit flies are flying around my plants. And I'll say, well, well those are probably not fruit flies, they're probably fungus gnats. Uh, basically, um, what attracts them is that if you overwater your um, plants, that organic matter that's inside of that soil attracts these particular uh, flies. Um, they're, they're trying to find um, fungi that is growing on the surface of that oversaturated soil. Um, and what they do is they lay their eggs in there. And when their eggs hatch, their larvae will hatch and um, they will actually feed on the uh, organic matter that's in that soil. Um, you can also find them outside uh, in, around compost heaps um, and in worm bins and things like that. Anywhere that there's an oversaturation of moisture and you have organic matter, uh, you will find these flies there. So the way you control them is, number one, you don't have to water your plants so much. Um, if you do have a problem with um, uh, fungus gnats, the first thing to do is allow your plant soil to dry out. You want your plants to be damp, not soggy. Um, that will also lead to uh, root rot which will also attract fungus gnats um, because again, it's deca decaying plant matter that is attracting them, that fungi that grows and those microorganisms that grow on that uh, uh, you know, de decomposing matter. So you'll want your soil to dry out, but you'll also want to uh, incorporate mosquito dunks oh or bits. So mosquito die. dunks or bits, they contain a die. bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis israelis. Um, it's a bacteria that specifically targets uh, flies, uh, different flies that, you know, uh, utilize uh, aquatic environments uh, to reproduce. So they, it'll control mosquitoes, it'll control midge flies, it'll control um, fungus gnats, as well as drain flies, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but you'll want to add that to the soil. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive, but you need to water it in. Um, there are some liquid uh, BTs too, they're kind of expensive to purchase, um, but you can put that in there as well. But what happens is, is that this bacteria will kill the larva so they never make it to the adult phase. Now to control the adults, you're going to have to use yellow sticky traps for the adults. Uh, the adults do not actually feed at all. Um, so uh, what basically what you're trying to do is just attract them. They're attracted to yellow. Um, and they'll stick to those sticky traps and uh, and that's how you control the adults. As long as the adults can't make it to the soil, they can get stuck to sticky traps and they're not going to be able to reproduce. <coughs> Let's see, Power, Power My Fro said I love the knowledge. Thank you for tuning in, Power My Fro. Uh, it was a good, um, they said they're good. I'm experiencing flies at my home. What kind of flies are you experiencing? Uh, if you're still on here, it was so good. 
I got flies. Are they big flies or little flies? Uh, let's see, what's the second one? I can't see my numbers. They're so little. So it's probably going to go out of order, but that's okay. Well, I got flies. No, yeah, I'm they were out of order. Um, anyway, so the next part we're going to talk about are fruit flies. Um, <clears throat> so these are the common flies that you'll find around overly ripe or rotting fruit. Um, the adults are actually attracted to the smell of yeast that is growing uh, and actually oh, fermenting or breaking down that fruit. The fermentation is the process of, you know, breaking down uh, sugars and turning them to alcohols, and that's one of the processes of uh, decomposition. So the fruit flies are attracted to that smell, and that's why you usually find them around, you know, rotting, any type of rotting fruit, uh, some vegetables and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so the way you control the adults are, you want to set up some type of traps that will either contain yeast, or it will contain some type of fermenting liquid, uh, like uh, you can pour wine. Um, I've actually set up traps and I put, uh, I had some honey that had actually started to ferment, so it turned into mead. Um, and put it in there and it attracted them to there. Also, you can <coughs> create these traps um, and put a piece of rotting fruit in there and that will attract the adults down in there. Um, when you create these traps that do not have any type of insecticide in there, what will happen is you'll get a lot of uh, fruit flies to fly in there, but uh, they can become a breeding ground. So you want to dispose of them uh, within a few days because um, the fly uh, reproductive uh, cycle, you know, they'll lay eggs and you can, you'll have maggots, you can have flies within like 10 days, uh, depending on the temperature and things. So. You want to make sure that you uh, uh, dispose of those traps or put them outside um, so that, you know, you don't have uh, more flies contributing to your infestation. The next thing you want to do is make sure you don't leave fruit sitting out in the open. There's little nets and things and uh, covers that you can buy, put over your fruit if you have to leave it sitting out. Uh, you just don't want to... Uh, you don't want to have fruit exposed, especially if it's ripe, because that's going to attract them, and then they're going to try to find a way to break that skin and actually lay their eggs. Um, I know when you like go to the grocery store, you'll see fruit flies flying around a lot of the fruit uh, and things at the grocery store. Um, bananas are a huge uh, culprit of you know having fruit flies when they lay their eggs in the in the peel. Um, and then, you know, you'll take the bananas home and then those eggs will hatch oh, and what will happen is then you'll have an infestation because of that uh, fruit um, being infested with those flies. Um, but yes, these are, are the ones you're going to find around fruit mostly. Um, they're not really attracted to garbage unless the garbage is like rotting fruit and things like that. Um, so just be mindful of that and make sure that you... Uh, <clears throat> I say cover your fruit or lie. keep it in the refrigerator or freeze it, especially if it's getting close to the point where it's so overly ripe it's almost rotting. Um, you don't want that sitting around because it will attract them. Alright, drain flies. We'll talk about drain flies next. So my little slides are a little off. Um, I have to fix those next time I do a presentation because it's kind of up too high. But anyway, um, next slide we're going to talk about are drain flies that are also called drain, uh, I'll call it moth flies. Um, you usually find these around drains or sinks or pipes that are leaking and things like that. Uh, basically, the adults look for, um, you know, drains that are dirty. Um, they have organic matter in them that accumulates. It could be food. Say you have like a uh, garbage disposal in your sink or something and you don't regularly empty it out. Uh, what will happen is you can attract these drain flies. They'll lay their eggs in there and their larva will eat on that organic matter that has built up in there. Uh, they'll eat on the sludge that uh, accumulates inside pipes and things. Um, so you just want to make sure that, you know, you're keeping your drains clean and you're clearing it for clogs. Uh, if you have a drain that's backed up, making sure that you're cleaning it out and 
uh, and you know, regularly checking it to make sure if you have like a uh, garbage disposal or something that there's not food and things in there that will attract these. Uh, the first sign you'll see is the, these little tiny flies that look kind of like moths and you'll see them coming out of the drain or you'll see them like in a bathroom, um, in the showers and things uh, and that, that's basically, uh, you know, they're attracted to this, uh, those rotting, um, that rotting organic matter that has built up in that drain or in that pipe and things like that. Um, so another way you can control them is to use liquid BT. Uh, liquid BT, again, um, BT is a bacteria that is used to control uh, flies, um, and the liquid is kind of expensive, um, but it does work. Again, it does the same thing that it would do for the drain fly, uh, I'm sorry, the fungus gnats. Uh, it'll actually control the larva. Um, once you clear up the, you know, the source of their food, and you know the accumulation of moisture all these flies they need a moist environment to stay in um to survive in their larva need they need moisture so if you have like leaky drains and pipes and things like that you might want to get those prepared so that these these flies do not have a uh you know a water source um, they need that moisture for their larva to survive and so if you get rid of that you get rid of the food source then you get rid of the flies All right, and the last fly we're going to talk about is the forest fly. Um, this is the most annoying uh, small field fly that you can deal with. Um, they're also called scuttle flies or humpback flies. Um, these flies are usually the first ones to show up uh, when there's something has passed away, if something has recently died. Um, they will show up, and they will show up in large numbers, and, um, you know, they're a, they're a huge problem at like mausoleums and uh, these flies will actually burrow six feet down to get inside coffins to lay their eggs on, you know, de decaying bodies and things. Um, and so these flies are annoying because they, they, they're capable of flying, but what they do is they scuttle across uh, surfaces. So if you see a fly that's just a little tiny fly that's constantly crawling, it's probably a forward fly. It's probably not a fruit fly. And if you see it crawling and it, it's it's not really being attracted to fruit, it's just being attracted to, you know, garbage and things like that. These are probably going to be these uh, forward flies. Um, the, the larvae will feed on the, a variety of the decomposing organic uh, matter that could be plant or animal origin. Uh, like I told you, they will feed on, their larvae will feed on uh, dead carrion, dead bodies and things like that, uh, animal waste. Um, human waste, sewage, garbage, um, they're, they're not picky. It, if it's something that's decaying, breaking down, they're, they're going to show up and they're going to show up in large numbers. And if you um, do not get their population under control, they will quickly get out of control. Um, a few forward flies, like I tell you, a fly can lay eggs. You can have a new fly within a week, depending on the temperature. If it's in the 80s and 90s, that their development is temperature based and so if you have 80 90 degrees you're going to have flies very quickly um and so if you don't get this population under control they will take over and they are just the most annoying flies that you'll ever have to deal with um so basically what you want to do is you want to find the source of whatever is their food source uh basically if it's um you know if you have accumulation of garbage say you have a garbage can that sits outside your window or something uh if you have an accumulation of um these these flies will even go into your drain so if you have backed up drains and things that could be something that's attracting them another thing is that they are attracted to like i told you anything that has recently passed away so say you have like a mouse or something that dies in your walls, that will attract them as well. So you want to find a source of what is attracting them. What is it something in your walls? Is it something in your garbage can? Is it something in your drain? Um, and once you eliminate that, uh, usually you can get their population back under control. You'll be able to, uh, you know, kill them 
because uh, they don't have their food source, they don't have their water source. Um, but I know these are the most annoying. Um, I would rather deal with the other three than have to deal with forest flies because they're so hard to control. Because, like I told you, so anything can attract them. If you if you had something something it's about to die, they will show up. Like they can pretty much determine when something's about to pass away, and they will show up there. Um, I had to deal with these a few years ago when my uh, dog was about to pass away. She had cancer. Um, and that's how I knew she was about to die because these forest flies came out of nowhere. They can also survive in cool temperatures. Again, these are decomposers, so they're out in nature. When something is about to pass away or something has died, they will show up and they will uh, come in and feed uh, to break that stuff down. Um, and so basically, uh, and I ended up having to put my dog down, but I knew it was, her death was imminent because these flies showed up and I just could not get rid of them until, you know, she passed away and she was no longer at the house. Um, so yeah, they are annoying. Um, they will crawl all over everything. You'll be trying to prepare food, and, you know, like fruit flies and stuff, they usually stay to the fly, uh, to the fruit, uh, fungus snatch, they'll usually stay by your plants. These flies, they will be right there trying to get in your <laughs> while you're trying to cook and things they're just like crawling around yeah it's very annoying um and so like i say you need to get their source of what is attracting them um and then you'll get them under control so anybody have any questions um i only had those four flies to talk about um uh, i'll do a, a demo video on how to make a fruit fly trap out of a uh out of a water bottle um, but I'll do that another time uh, but basically I wanted to just come in here and talk about these small flies because I I see a lot of people posting about uh, gnats and things in their in their uh, their soil when they're starting their gardens or it's in their mulch or you know they're they're doing house plants and they have all these little flies around their house plants or you know in their kitchen they have all these little flies and they're not not understanding where they may have come from and so I just wanted to do this presentation uh, let's see if we have a question so condo plant mama said that I did you cover the flies with iridescent green did you cover flies with iridescent green flies no I didn't cover those are actually called blow flies or they could be cluster flies uh, but basically those are larger field flies um they again they show up when uh something's about to pass away um or you know they're attracted to garbage uh um you know dirty drains and things like that anywhere where there's a lot of organic matter uh you know if you're if you're if an animal or something defecates outside they're usually the ones that you know invade that and things like that um now if you're having a lot of blow flies in your home uh, there's something in there that's attracting them. If you live in an apartment complex, it may be someone living in uh, another house, and they may, you know, they may have the filthy things that are attracting them. Uh, so you have to get to the source of why they're coming in. Um, once you do that, then uh, then what will happen is is that you you can get their populations under control once you can control what they're feeding on and actually laying their eggs on. Because uh, a lot of these flies, some of them don't even feed as adults, uh, but they need a, a need a source of uh, organic matter to lay their eggs on, so that their larva can feed, and then you know turn into adults. And like I said before, temperature-wise, if it's in the upper 80s, lower 90s, they will uh, flies will develop very quickly. You can have a new fly within seven to ten days, from egg to larva to adult, in seven to ten days. I appreciate everyone buying badges this evening. You guys are awesome. Thank you, B, B1, BJ. Thank you, Condo Plant Mama. <laughs> so any other questions about flies? Um, I'll do another video about the, the other the other flies but I know a lot of people are dealing with these little ones right now um, 
and as we get into fall and into winter and people are starting to bring their plants and stuff in uh they're going to be dealing with them pretty much over the whole uh fall and winter um because they will live in the soil um people will bring in all types of things when they bring plants in and, and things in from outside uh to overwinter indoors um, and they always end up infesting their homes and things and then they don't understand like well why is this here why how did this get here and so you know that's why i wanted to talk about these guys because a lot of people are right now you know they're they're growing things in gardens and on farms and then they're bringing this fruit and stuff into their home and then now now they're having to deal with flies uh these little flies and that's that's usually how they get there when you when you go out there and get that tomato, you know, and you let ripen on the uh, vine, and you bring it in the house. Usually, it's probably been some some uh, fruit flies that have been on it before you brought it in, and so as that tomato starts to break down, those little larvae will hatch. Uh, I'm sorry, those eggs will hatch, and you'll have those larvae, and then you'll have those when they turn into adults, and then you have um, an infestation. Also, when you go to the grocery store. You can look and see the uh, produce that has the flies flying all around it, the fruit flies especially, and you probably want to avoid that because if you don't, what's happen what's going to happen is you're going to bring those into your home. Um, fungus gnats, if you if you have potted plants in your house and you buy that soil or you buy uh, uh, compost and things and you're mixing that in there, a lot of times those fungus gnats uh, will be present in there. Um, also overwatering, they say you leave a window open or something, they can smell that fungi in that soil and that will attract them. <clears throat> is there a specific pot of, is there a specific produce that brings in more flies than others? Bananas, uh, bananas bring in a lot of fruit flies. <laughs> um, Tomatoes, like I say, a lot of people that are growing tomatoes outdoors and then they bring those in, uh, a lot of times the tomatoes have that, have the fruit flies in there. Um, and I say with the fungus gnats, it's going to be mostly your soil. Uh, so anytime you're starting house plants and you're using new soil that you might have bought from the, uh, like Home Depot or something, it could be infested with, uh, fungus gnats. <laughs> So yeah, bananas, uh, trying to think, anything that's overly ripened, um, so like, usually they have that discount fruit, uh, that's about to spoil and they, they mark the price down to get you to buy it. A lot of times that's already infested with fruit flies and sometimes you'll see the fruit flies flying around it at the stores. Another thing, um, mushrooms too. Um, mushrooms can have um, uh, some flies that live in there as well, depending on um, you know if they're packaged versus the ones that are kind of like in the bulk when you go and buy the bulk kind. Sometimes they can be infested with uh, flies as well. Yes, mangoes. Yes. Anything with a high sugar content that will break down and ferment. <laughs> Those, uh, those fruit flies will be right on it. <laughs> Alright, so I don't want to hold you guys. I just wanted to come in here and do this short uh, video. If you have any questions, you can always uh, DM me or you can email me at urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. Um, or you can put questions. I'll, I'll post this video uh, so that it's up on my uh, Instagram, um, on my stories and wall and stuff. And I will uh, be back um, soon with another video. Um, if you guys think of anything that you want me to come on here and present about, you can also send me that too and I can do some presentations about that. Alright, guys, have a good evening. Thanks for tuning in. Adios.